Hey there everyone, I hope everyone is doing well today. So today is the video for 1118. And what we're going to be going over today is the online workshop for portfolios. Now, I did do this on Monday, but I have added to the lesson, so I would like to go over some of the changes, and I would just like to go over the lesson just in general. Um, in case anyone missed class on Monday, please keep in mind we do not have classes next week because it is Thanksgiving break. Um, so your last few classes should be this Thursday, and you have off the 23rd and then classes will resume again on November 30th so please keep that in mind going forward um, I would like to talk about the schedule real quick as well so I have finished grading papers for this section of comp 1 so your CTA grades should be available through Blackboard. Um, if you have not handed in the CTA already, please uh, send me an email and we will work something out. Um, but I do need that CTA as soon as possible. So what we're going over today and what we're doing is um, going over the online workshop, or I'm sorry, What we're doing is working on portfolio websites and cover letters. So that is where we are at in the schedule. Um, now, please keep in mind on Monday, I did go over that same lesson and I talked about final reflection letters. So um, hopefully going over the lesson in this video will give a broad overview of what is needed for portfolios. And that is what you should be working on over Thanksgiving break. Um, please keep in mind that reading response number nine is due tonight by midnight and you can find that under the discussion boards and the reading response number nine and those are the chapters about reflection and self-evaluation and how to build a portfolio so it's very much in tandem of what we're doing the last few weeks of class um, now please note that final portfolios are due on wednesday december 9th by midnight and that is the latest I can take them there will be no extensions on that date just because of there's very little class left at that point so there's really no room for extensions on portfolios so that deadline is final um, Wednesday December 9th by midnight um, now please keep in mind that I will take any revised essays or resubmitted essays up until Monday, December 7th. So say that you want to resubmit a paper for a better grade, you are welcome to do so. But the latest I will absolutely take them is Monday, December 7th at midnight. And those dead deadlines are um, very much in stone. <clears throat> so anyway, what we're doing today is working on portfolio websites and cover letters. And I will be going over the lesson that I have linked in the syllabus, the online workshop for digital portfolios. So with that in mind, I think I will go ahead and just kind of dive right in. Now, of course, designing your site. Remember that writing is a process that involves at least four distinct steps, and that should be evident by your website. So the four distinct steps are, of course, pre-writing, drafting, revising, and editing. So writing, of course, is a recursive process. It's your job to capture these processes through your website. So you can use design to show your processes, make a several page or several. And I would definitely recommend keeping it for composition too, if you have to take that course as well. Uh, be sure to take pictures of things that may be handwritten. Make sure everything is in it and clearly found. Um, this is the link to the tutorial for Google Websites. So if you need to watch that, feel free. 
that is about 15 minutes long. Now these are links from previous lessons of mine, help with Google Sites, help with how to create a Google, Google website, the LinkedIn learning page, and how to upload files to your Google site. And I went over these quite in depth on Monday, so I am just gonna do a brief overview of those. Now I did add a couple more website examples from previous comp one sections. So you are welcome um, to check those out. Um, I really like this website because she did a wonderful job on her final reflection letter. And this is a great example of the final reflection letter of what should be your homepage. Um, I also linked another website that has a very nice design and she also did a great job on her uh, final reflection letter for comp one. So I included those links. Um, I did ask their permission and um, yeah. So just a couple more examples of websites to be looking at. I did go over these on Monday as well. So if you want to check those examples of previous student portfolios, please feel free. So here is the checklist of materials that are required to be part of your Google website page. Now I did upload, the, I did um, update this a bit. So the things that I uploaded, or I'm sorry, that I updated for this is uh, make sure you also have your diagnostic essay. So I would like everyone to please include their diagnostic essay, their stuff for their DCA, their RA, their CTA, and the final reflection letter and the home page that will serve as a final reflection for the course. Now, again, I did go over these guidelines in depth um, both last week and on Monday, so I am not going to go too in depth on these in this video, but it is there for you. So these are the reflection letter links, again, stuff that I went over on Monday. Um, so this is the DCA reflection letter, the RA reflection letter, and the CTA reflection letter. Now, the only thing that's new that I did go over on Monday is the CTA reflection letter. So it's very similar um, to the other reflection letters. So how are digital portfolios graded? So portfolios are graded by clear essays that demonstrate an awareness of audience and purpose, a rhetorical written response to multiple perspectives on a given issue, reflective responses demonstrating writing as a collaborative recursive process, and all, uh, and all, something else we consider is, is the portfolio complete? Are all artifacts or items present? Now keep in mind your audience, your main audience of course will be myself as your instructor and a second faculty reader from the English department. Therefore being organized and concise is important. Again, these are the directions for the final reflection letter. So you want to think of the cover letter as your opportunity to clearly prove to your instructor and any faculty readers that you have mastered the learning outcomes associated with this course. So you want to include an introduction that explains your writing background before you took this class, state a recent claim about how you have developed as a writer during the semester, and you can use your work from the semester to support your recent claim. So this is a great sample reflection letter. Um, so if you take a look at the link, um, she does a great job with the overall cover letter and the reflection letter. She does very well with discussing the development and evolution of her own writing process during the course of the semester, as well as all three writing assignments. And she, uh, what makes a great cover letter is discussing how you have personally improved as a writer during the course. So this is the second component that I have added to this lessons, and that is the importance of reflective writing. And this will be uh, going forward, forward pertaining to both composition one and composition two. So what is reflective writing? So reflective and reflection writing are umbrella terms that refer to any activity that asks you to think about your own thinking. Um, especially in a writing class, you may be asked to think about your writing processes in general or in relation to a particular essay to think about your inten intentions regarding rhetorical elements such as audience and purpose or to think about your choices regarding development strategies. 
So in our course, the reflective writing pieces, um, such as the reflection letters, are important because they are not only reflecting upon each student's progress within the writing process, but also help guide the direction of the final portfolio. So the final portfolio itself is a rhetorical artifact because it presents argument, purpose, audience, logos, ethos, and pathos, all things that we've been di discussing throughout all these 15 weeks throughout the whole semester since day one. So why is this important to comp? So writing teachers often play two roles in relation to their students. I am not only your instructor, but I am also a fellow writer. So as a writer, I have learned that revision can be overwhelming. And this can be in many cases. Uh, it's tempting sometimes just to fiddle with words and commas if I don't know what else to do. So reflection is an important built-in mechanism of writing. And that's why it's so widely included across all composition courses. Uh, no matter if you take a composition course at a private college, um, a public community college, wherever you take composition courses now, reflection is very much a built-in component for writing courses. And the reason why that is, is because it helps you move from drafting to publication. So other things that you might think about is to revise is to revision or to re-see, to rethink about these issues. But if you, if you have to create a critical distance to be able to imagine your piece done another way. So reflection helps you create that distance. It helps your instructor better guide your work and respond to it. So in terms of this particular composition course, it's not only a requirement for the final portfolio, but it also helps get everyone ready for comp two. So why is this? It's because reflective writing is a built-in component for the course outcomes. And as Gills stated, um, which is where that above quote is from, it helps guide instructors in how the writing process is taught. Since the scholarship is always changing, English instructors are always required to adapt each and every semester. So why is it important to get into the habit of reflective writing? Why is it so important and why is it a built-in component? And one thing that uh, Sandra Gills states is one of the most important functions of reflective writing is the, in the long run is to establish in you, the writer, a habit of self-reflective thinking. Now, why is self-reflective thinking so important? And that is something that we're thinking about um, as well. Now, some students think of it as a teacher pleasing game, but that's not the case. That's not the purpose behind it. We don't want you to think or say certain things just because you think we want to hear it. But one thing that we do want to hear from you um, is things that we can help with, things that we can do a better and in, in, in our pedagogy to help improve your writing and help improve your writing habits. And of course, that is a lot of purpose between uh, that between composition one and composition two. It's of course becoming a better writer, becoming a better thinker, becoming a better learner. And learning is what you'll be doing the rest of your life, even going forward in college courses or in whatever you choose to do uh, throughout your career. <clears throat> so in other words, it helps guide the learning and writing process, not only in comp one and comp two, but also in other courses. It aids with JCC's mission to contribute to liberal arts, and it's relevant to multiple disciplines, not just writing courses. So anyway, that is the lesson for today going forward. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I have office hours this week on Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. You are more than welcome to wander in. Of course, you can find my virtual office hours tab and find the information. Um, anyway, that is it for today. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a great weekend and a wonderful holiday. I will see you all again. Uh, again, classes will resume on November 30th, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you so much.